chosen some ploughs that I'm going to make the um, wood turning chisels from. Uh, the plan is I'm going to make a skew, a scraper out of that one. The half round file, I don't know if that will make a spindle gouge. But if not, I've got some high tensile bar that I can turn down to uh, one inch. That will certainly make a spindle gouge. And this is the sledge on the head that I'm going to anneal. I think that will be big enough to, for the uh, mini melee tool post. I think that's uh, maybe get uh, two or three out of that. So let's get them in. That's the longest item, but Well, we're up to the desired temperature now. The um, PID is controlling the input of it now, I'm switching it on and off, so it'll maintain that temperature. I'm going to leave that now for two hours before I turn it off. Well, guys, it's been soaking now for two hours. And it's as hot as my pants. I'm just about to turn the thing off and then let it cool down. And we'll just have a quick look inside before I do. Everything's glowing red hot. You wouldn't want to be in there. Okay guys, I'm going to turn the power off. Just let it cool down overnight. I shall be back. Morning guys. It's now been eight hours since I've turned the furnace off. So uh, let's have a see what temperature we're down to. Well, it's come down from 765, it's still 372 degrees. I must admit it's nice and warm down here. I won't have to put the central heating on for a while. I'm not sure what temperature it's safe to uh, start opening the door on. Um, on the back of the furnace, there's a vent pipe. So I'm thinking of uh, just opening that a touch, just to try and speed things up. Right guys, I'm now round at the back. I'm just going to open this exhaust vent, quarter of a turn. Just try and uh, get it to cool down a bit quicker. Right guys, I'll let the oven cool down to 200 degrees before I open the main door. It's still, uh, still too warm to put your hand in. But I've taken the uh, pieces out and they've cooled down. 
this is the biggest piece is still slightly worn and uh, first impressions there's quite a bit of oxidization on the uh, on the files but uh, they don't seem to have uh, deteriorated much this uh, half round file this was probably the grottiest one that I put in that's, uh, that's taken a bit of a beating but once you take the oxidisation off it's, it's still a reasonable condition Yeah, I think we'll clean up okay. Um, let's uh, give it a try. Yeah, well, the file's definitely biting into that. You can feel the plot on that one. That was the high tensile bar that I put in. The half round file. Yes, it's definitely eating into that. Now, ideally, I'd have a Rockwell hardness tester to test these, but I haven't got one. Uh, the next option is I don't know if you've seen the small hardness files that you can buy, the different uh, different grades but unfortunately I haven't got any of those either so the next best, best option is um, some of these
quick update to what I'm up to guys the large block that was originally the sledgehammer I've machined that down at the moment I've got two tool holders machined out I now need to uh, machine a slot in the the back side to take the uh, cutting tools and then drill some um, threaded holes so that's those done still got one block to cut down for two more holders the uh, fat piles that I'm going to make a scraper and a skew out of I've had those on the surface grinder taking most of the teeth off there's still a bit left, but left on but um, I think this, those will disappear once they've been hardened and I put them back onto the surface grinder so that's those two the spindle gouge out of that bar uh, this is where we're at at the moment I've got most of the um, the dish cut out on the horizontal mill with a half round milling cutter um, once I've hardened it the intention is I'm going to go down with this um, I made an arbor for this uh, small grinding wheel and uh, intention is just to go down the side of it once that's finished so that's that now when I anneal these I didn't get too much oxidization on them but I've got some very thin stainless steel foil now, these two I'm going to put in as they are but as an experiment I'm going to wrap this spindle gouge in some of this foil to see if it cuts down on the oxidization I've not tried this before so that'll be a first but it'll be interesting to see what the results are with that I've switched the oven on it's starting to warm up I'm going to make a frame when I anneal these I just put them on the hot plate on the bottom but I'm going to make a frame to try and lift them up and sit them on top I might get a more even heat distribution but it'll also make life easier when I come to take them out of the furnace with the tongs. So, let's get these in the oven. I was going to make a frame for these items to sit on but this is a, a tool post I've been making for wood turning now I've been annealed this initially and welded it onto this piece of angle plate so I thought it'd be an ideal time to uh, harden this again so instead of a frame for them to sit on I'm going to put this in first 
and then um, sit the f sit the files on top of it. I think that will do just as good as a a tray to sit on, and I'll be able to get all done with the tongs easily enough. See if this foil makes any difference. Well, we've got about another 100 degrees to go before we reach the uh, temperature we're aiming for. So I've started to prepare a quenching tub. Um, I've looked round everywhere and the only suitable container I could find is an old bread bin. Um, and it's got a slight crack in it, so I've taped it up, and filled it with oil, put it in a larger container, which I've put some warm water in just to try and take the chill off the oil so I think that's right let's look at the oven now well I've taken one of the files out guys and it's absolutely red hot now I'll just put it onto the second I've got my uh, tongs there it's not the easiest thing Oh, I shot it. That's better. Let's do a see how soft it is. Got my teeth. I don't usually wear the teeth in the workshop, but this occasion I think it might be best. Yeah, it's leaving some teeth marks in that. Yeah, it's really soft now, guys. Now, since I installed this oven, I've only ever annealed steel. Let me take my teeth out. Bloody things. Since I've got this oven, I've only ever annealed steel to soften it, so, so I can machine it. This is the first, first attempt I've gone to have at um, hardening it. And I don't mind admitting I'm feeling a little nervous, but I've got my welding gloves, my uh, pull face shield, and I've got my asbestos underpants on. They're a bit itchy, but I'll have to put up with that. Well, it's been soaking at uh, 750 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes now, so here goes. I'm going to try the first one. Well, that was painless, guys. That's one. There goes the second one. Good so far. 
Now this is the one that I wrapped in the stainless foil. Finally guys, the biggest piece, this was the tool rest. Well, first thoughts guys, next time I do that, the extractor pan goes on first, but having looked at them, these are ones that didn't have the foil on, the two files, and they don't seem to have deteriorated at all. In the test. Yeah, no, you can tell the hard because of the files skipping over the top. The, uh, the noise is a good indication. So that one's hardened. Yeah, that's not that's not touching it at all. So that's two good ones. This one I'm not so sure about. I wasn't particularly certain what uh, what steel this was when I made it. I was in assumption it was uh, high carbon, but it's not deteriorated. But the file is digging into it, so maybe there's not as much carbon in this piece. But. It's going to be a tool. It's going to be a tool rest when I'm turning wood on the small layers. This is a tool rest that I made, so um, I don't think the hardness is too critical on that one. But this will be interesting. Now this is the one that I. This was going to be the spindle gouge that I wrapped in the stainless foil. And, uh, let's see if it's made any difference. I'm not expecting a lot of difference because, as I say, these these haven't come out bad at all. But
there's a bit of scale on it but with the wire brush it comes back down to a to being smooth so maybe that has worked I think that's as hard as the two files have become, but it is biting slightly, but but then again, this um, this piece may not have had as much carbon as the, as the two files. But overall, I'm quite happy with those. It was a first attempt. Right guys, I'm going to knock these into shape now with the grinder. That one's going to be the scraper. That one's the skew. Then of course we've got the spindle gouge. That one just wants to clean up now. I think we've finished got there in the end um, this is a half round one that I annealed I haven't touched that one at all apart from filing it originally to see if it had softened but I was um, I was saving that one to see how I went on with this um, I tensile by which was going to be the spindle gouge and uh, it's turned out quite good. Um, I've still got to sharpen the, uh, put the tip on the diamond horn, but um, it's solid and it feels well balanced. Um, overall, I'm very pleased with it. The um, the scraper 
came out good as well. It's a lot lighter than this one, but that's to be expected. Um, still got one or two of the file teeth on, but I don't want to take it any thinner than that. I can live with that. I don't think that's going to be any detriment. I don't want to make it any thinner than it is. And the skew. It may be on a bit on the long side, but uh, you can always cut it down. Um, I'm going to give it a try for us to see, but I've just got a feeling it might be a bit too long, but you can always um, take more off. So there you go guys. Two, two old files and a piece of bar and some cricket wickets turned into three decent turning chisels. Thanks for watching guys.